The Orville is the Star Trek series I've been waiting for for a very long time, which is obviously ironic given the fact that this is not a Star Trek show, but it's close enough. But as the season went on, the show's own identity began to emerge and the characters became more developed. The most important balance to achieve was always going to be the show's comedy and the genuine drama and sci-fi concepts. Could the show hold up dramatically and in terms of science fiction, or would it border on farce and spoofery due to focusing too heavily on humour. Thankfully, the comedy is, I would say, a secondary component of the show, albeit a very welcome one, as the levity enables the show to not become too serious, but also means the show won't be held to the same ridiculously high standard of other straight sci-fi series. If anything, having an element of comedy gives the show more leeway creatively and thematically. For me, the pilot was okay. A decent introduction, but pilots are tricky. They can try to do too much, and it's tough when you only have one hour to establish everything. The first really solid sci-fi story reminded me of the TOS episode, For the World is Hollow and I Have Touched the Sky, the episode called If the Stars Should Appear, in which the crew encounters an ancient, multi-generational vessel on a collision course for a star. Inside the vessel is an Earth-like environment, and the primitive and superstitious inhabitants are unaware they're on a ship. The Krill was a show that explored the culture of the show's primary bad guys. Mercer and Malloy pretend to be Krill officers who must get their hands on an ancient religious Krill book. They have to try to stop a Krill weapon from being deployed over a Union colony and discover a way to kill the Krill crew. (laughs) Try saying that three times fast. However, Mercer draws the line at killing a room full of Krill schoolchildren. Ultimately, the episode ends on a rather foreboding note, with Mercer learning the Krill children will likely just grow up to be more hateful of the Union and humans. Majority Rule is another inspired story from Black Mirror, in which the inhabitants of an Earth-like world make use of a social credit system to rank each other, kind of like China. If someone receives too many downvotes, like on social media, they have to go on an apology tour. If that's unsuccessful, they get lobotomized. It was a wonderful commentary on social media and social justice witch hunts and outrage culture. Into the Fold focused on the character of Dr. Claire Finn and on Isaac. Having been stranded on an alien planet with her children, Claire is taken prisoner. Isaac must take care of her sons. Penny Johnson Gerald really shines in this story, in some very heartwarming scenes with her kids, and a dark and intense personal story that I believe could have been taken straight out of an episode of Deep Space Nine. Even Isaac manages to be humanized to a certain extent, becoming a kind of temporary surrogate father to the boys. Definitely a moving and memorable story. It was also quite nice to see longtime Star Trek veteran writers Brandon Braga and Andre Bormanis team up to write this one, with Braga directing and doing a very good job with it. Firestorm is an Alara-centric story and definitely adds a lot of depth to her character as she was forced to overcome her personal demons following a failed rescue attempt of Lieutenant Payne. I won't spoil it for you, but I will say that I did enjoy the episode overall for its very surreal elements and visuals. I thought the conclusion, though, was a tad convenient and a little bit deus ex machina. New Dimensions begins to resolve some of the conflict between Mercer and Grayson that led to the end of their marriage, and Lamar is eventually promoted to the head of the engineering team after it's discovered he has some rather hidden talents intellectually. The cool sci-fi concept of this episode was the exploration of two-dimensional space. The season finale was good, but it borrowed a little too heavily from two Star Trek episodes. The first is the Deep Space Nine episode Meridian, about a planet that phases in and out of our universe periodically, and the Voyager episode Blink of an Eye, in which time moves faster on an alien planet than it does in the rest of the universe. In this story, the crew visit a primitive world, interact with it, and accidentally contaminate their culture to such an extent that Kelly Grayson becomes their deity. With another 700 years passing in the next spatial shift, the extent of her influence becomes more prominent. It was similar to If the Stars Should Appear in that its emphasis was on science, reason, and logic over religious superstition, but as I say, the concept itself was a tad derivative. But then again, this is a Star Trek-inspired show, so derivative is hardly a scathing criticism. I would like the second season of The Orville to provide more original sci-fi concepts of its own. But as a series, I was entertained, occasionally moved, and occasionally made to think about something interesting, which is exactly what a show like this should be doing. The cast is also excellent, and I especially love how relatable all of the characters are. If there's one crew I'd like to get wasted with in the mess hall, it's this one. 
The Orville season one is a fun time that has managed to successfully establish itself in its very own genre as a serious sci-fi show with a blend of drama and comedy while not falling into cliched formulaic sitcom routines. I'm very much looking forward to more of this in the next season.